This is the Following the Nerd Podcast. Oh, it's a, it's a night of disasters. Put your earphones on, put your earphones on. This is Shine 102.4 FM, and you are following the nerd. I'm Mark. I'm Jay. Oh. Ooh, turn me down. Crumbs. Okay, try that. Crumbs, chief. Um, yes, so this is uh, Shine 102.4 FM, and you are following the nerd. Um, <clears throat> our, our, our usual co-host, Saxon, isn't with us tonight. Uh, he has, very unfortunately, he's had a death in the family, so... Uh, just to let him know that our, our thoughts and prayers are with both him and his family tonight um, as well. Uh, but he, I, I don't know, he might be listening. If he is, Saxon, we're all thinking about you, sir. We really are. Um, but on with the show. We On tonight's show, we are going to be talking to a gentleman who wrote a book called A Long Time Ago. Uh, and it's about his experiences with Star Wars and how he grew up with Star Wars and then grew out of Star Wars. Uh, so we're going to be talking to him about a quarter past nine tonight. Very, very exciting. Uh, Jay, it's been a while since you've been on the show. How are you? I am okay. It's been about <clears throat> five and a half months. Wow. Really? I'm nearly ready to drop the baby. <laughs> okay. Um, you're, you're certainly rocking the Mr. Miyagi outfit tonight. I may have been teaching Kung Fu tonight. Oh, Kung My f- first full class back in six months. Wow. I know, it's weird. Because you haven't been well. well no. Been not, but you, you've been pearly. I may have lost an organ. Okay. Right. <laughs> Should we leave it like that? Yes. <laughs> Just leave it hanging there. They could. Um, it what? still hangs. Okay, nice. Um, so, yes, uh, but it's so good to have you back. It's Thank so you so much. I've missed it. I kept meaning to come back and then driving is not good. No. But tonight, it's okay. Okay. All right. But it is good to have you back. Uh, you can get us at any time during the show tonight on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash following nerd. You can tweet us at nerd following or if you're out there listening live right now. Um, and this is the 16th of January 2014 for anybody that's listening to this in podcast land in the in the very near future. Or in a time machine. Or in a time machine. Mm-hmm. Wow. It could happen. Yes, we went there. Uh, you can text us on 079 Of course, you'd have to be in the UK for that. Um, right. With a lot of news. Oh. Hello. Hello. Has someone phoned already? No, it's, uh, I think we're getting, a, we're getting a technical. We had a, a small problem because I forgot that I had my computer rebuilt and then it wouldn't connect to the internet and it was all, oh, you know, it was a bit crazy. Well, but at, least, that at least you got it rebuilt. Yes. Two years ago, you told me about your computer needing rebuilt. Yes. It's, <laughs> um, thankfully, thankfully, it's, it's back. So, yeah, we've, we, have a lot of, we have a lot of comic book news tonight. Tonight's show is kind of the Marvel movie news As update it should special. Be. Uh, but we have some DC news. Are there any some... DC updates? Yeah, there is. Rumours. There is. There's, There's lots rumors, of rumours. Yeah. It's getting rumour-tastic, isn't it? Yeah. Do you remember all the rumours when the Dark Knight trilogy first kicked off about the villains and the powers and who would be in and out and none of it came true? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know. It is It is getting a little, uh, a little sort of... I don't know. We actually have stories tonight... Um, about actors that may be playing roles uh, that haven't the roles haven't been confirmed yet. No, and not only that, but we also have because what I what I do actually basically this show is kind of the last seven days on the website. Yes. Just you know, I go I take the greatest hits and we we go through it. Um, and we had Aquaman. Aquaman's a big character mm-hmm. uh, in the DC universe, and we've had two or three actors yeah. rumored. Of Josh from week. Lost. Yes. Um, Jason. Jason Mama, 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 I guess who's attached to everything. Oh. Um, <laughs> Like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, everything is Jason Momoa, Jason Except Momoa, Jason Except as much as I do like Jason Momoa. Well, I like him in Stargate Atlantis. At least if, jo- if Gordon-Levitt did it, it'd be good. <clears throat> yeah, because Momoa, he's, he's, he's a tank of a man, but that's really Do you it, know the it? part he should play? I thought, I think, maybe I did say it. On Doomsday? No, Doom, well, Doomsday or Black Bolt. Who is Black Bolt? Black Bolt is, in Marvel Comics, one of the Inhumans, so a race of kind of mutants but genetically modified humanoid people and Black Bolt is their leader king stroke person he okay. can't speak if he speaks his voice destroys things okay so that's who Jason Momoa should definitely be oh yes I did I was reading this conversation um, yeah but uh, I, I don't know I, I think I don't know I think we're going to get a lot of music <laughs> we're going to get a lot of music <laughs> he is a physical actor though yes a bit like the rumour that The Rock was going to be in something as well yeah I really hope he's not green if he's green I hope he's Martian Manhunter not um, John Stewart John Stewart is gravitas. He's powerful, but not massively not built. A, yeah, he's not a tank. You see, did you see the picture? We, we talked. We have talked. Myself and Saxon talked about this a few times. But yeah. Did you see the picture that the Hulk or the Hulk, the Rock <laughs> tweeted? 
of himself. Yes. And when he's, you know, he's flexing the muscles and he's wearing the Batman t-shirt. Yeah. And he just looks like Bane. He, he would make a good Bane, but is it too soon to... Well, far then again. too soon. I think it's far too soon. But he would make a better juiced up Bane. Yes. Rather than the Nolan Bane. Yeah. Because he's, I mean, he's huge. Yeah. He's huge. And every time you see him, he just get bigger. Because yeah. even for this movie Hercules, he's just a, he's just a lump he's of He's getting of bigger muscle. and bigger, isn't he? He is. Yeah. He's massive. And he, you he, should do he, his workout routine. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not, yeah. It's going to be one of those nights. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. You were lost in thought, weren't you? Oh, don't talk to me. Right. Oh. Oh. This is Falling in Earth on Shine 102.4 FM. I'm Mark. I'm Jay. It's going to be a very quiet show if I don't talk to you. No, please do talk to me. Okay, you. I'll talk to you. Okay. Um... Walking Dead. Walking Dead. Are you? Walking how, Dead. Are you? Are you loving Walking Dead? Not the comic book series, the TV series. Because obviously I'm loving. I yeah. am. Mm-hmm. I I remember that was it which whichever season it was was it two that people were moaning because it was too slow and there was a lot of people moaning. Yeah, I loved it though. <gasps> well, groaning as well. Mm-hmm. No, I think it's still. It may not be as hyped as it used to be, but it's still one of the best programs on TV, especially considering if you think about it. It's a horror story about zombies that has lasted for, what, three years, four years now? Uh-huh. That's, that's impressive. There has been highs in those, hasn't there, though? There has been, but the lows haven't been... Uh, do you know what it is? It's so such a good show. People were so hyped about it that when it's not as great as they want it to be, they think it's a bad show. But when you compare it to some really bad shows, it's always good. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, I mean, it's, it's coming back now to the second half of the fourth series, which is going to be open in um, April, is it, right? April, April time? March or April, yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry, Gib, if you're listening right now, you're trying to call him. We're actually live on air. We're going to call you very, very soon. Please be patient. Um, but, yeah, what, no, what we're going to say is uh, there's a spin-off series. Is it oversaturation? It depends. If it follows the exact same format, yes, because you don't need two Walking Deads with different, act- different characters. Mm-hmm. If it follows a different tack, so it's not just as dark and dismal and it's going to sound weird because it's Walking Dead zombies um, you know it might be nice to see maybe straight after the apocalypse or leading up to the apocalypse you know something a little bit different a different angle on it then it might work but yeah I think I'd be a bit bored if it was The Walking Dead with different characters. Right, well, basically, well, here's what's happened. AMC chief uh, Charlie Collier and programming head Joe Silverman have been talking about the new spin-off series, which I'm hoping is going to hit um, in 2015 at some point. Uh, the show is not that far along uh, compared to you know other shows. Robert has some things on his plate. He continues to write every issue of the comic and hasn't finished season four of The Walking Dead, which he's very intimately involved with and will be, continue to be. That's really the incubation mm-hmm. stage, right? The one thing that I'll share is that an anecdote that Robert shared with us, he has such a specific vision that he laid out really clearly in the first issue of the comic. And I encourage anyone who's interested in the show to go and read the note that he wrote in the first issue. Does this ring any bells with you? No. No, but it has okay. been, how, ooh, is it coming out for 10 years in the comic? Yeah. It's been eight years since I read the comic then. Okay, his motivation for telling the story was so clear and powerful and it served as such a great North Star for the, for the show. We kicked around a few ideas, but primarily what he's working on is... What the idea gives him a clear, a clear mandate to make another version of the show as the first one. So, I mean, we're going to get something that runs alongside, parallel, same parallel. universe, but yeah. not. It's not linked to not all that sub- group. Yeah. yeah, it's not subject to anything they do. Mm. So, but it's still in development. Uh, so they are still waiting for it. Okay, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to get in because we're running a wee bit behind tonight. We're going to go uh, straight to tonight's big interview. We're going to try and contact uh, Gib Van Ert, who's the author of A Long Time Ago, Growing Up uh, With and Out of Star Wars I'm looking forward to this because I mean Jay, this should be an interesting interview because you're you're, I will listen. you're quite the Star Wars virgin aren't you? Virtuoso did you say? <laughs> no I didn't <laughs> Yeah no I know nothing I don't know nothing I know Clone Wars uh, How are you enjoying Clone Wars? I love it and also because it's the first thing I've watched with my kids about Star Wars so I've got in sideways or backwards or and Star Wars Lego I've seen the Star Wars Lego movies yeah, I wouldn't Which go is, those. Well, it's nearly watching the real movies, isn't it? Yeah, funny enough, Lego is as close as you're going to get yeah. to Star Wars. And actually they're enjoyable. Wars. Yeah. So I will watch it at some point. Okay, right. You know what? Let's let's put ourselves in the hands of the Skype gods uh, and try and Which call... Which worked so well for me last night. Uh, um, Mr. Gib Van Ert. <laughs> Hello, Gib. Can you hear us? I can indeed. Hello, sir. How are you? Very well, thanks. How are you? I'm not too bad. I'm just going to turn our volume down a little bit here. Um, listen, first and foremost, thank you very much for taking the time out of what I'm sure is a busy schedule to come and talk to us. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. No, not at all. We're looking forward to talking to you. You're talking to Mark um, and Jay. Now, Great. this should be interesting because Jay, despite being a grown man of what age are you, Jay? You must, must be touching 40. I am nearly 11. <laughs> nearly 11. Yeah. Um, despite being a grown man, uh, Gib, believe it or not, he has never watched Star Wars. 
Well, he's one of the very few. Yes, he is. And we, we have been... I don't know how he managed to get onto our website and onto the show <laughs> without... He sort of slipped onto the radar and then announced it at a, at a stage that was far too late to do anything about. Uh, but we're constantly at him to, to watch Star Wars. Um, because I think it's, it's kind of necessary, isn't it? Uh, if you're of a certain age, I just think it's uh, such a part of our culture that I don't know how you get around it. <laughs> and he has kids as well. That's inexcusable. Wow. And I sleep it must be a Christmas. bit awkward. It is. <laughs> <laughs> um, right, listen, Gib, for anyone that's tuning into the show right now um, and is listening to this interview, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I'm uh, 40 years old, and I think age is pretty important in all this because I think it's a generational thing that we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I turned 40 in March. Uh, I live in Vancouver, B.C., and I'm a lawyer by day and, uh, frankly, didn't give a lot of thought to uh, Star Wars until a few years ago, except that it totally preoccupied my childhood. But I left it behind for a very long time and uh, then had a son uh, who's three and a half now and suddenly found myself thinking about it again quite a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I personally, I can, I can completely... It's, it, it's exactly what happened to me as a kid growing up. I was such a big Star Wars fan. And then I did move away from it a wee bit. Uh, and once my, my son came along, it kind of just became very important again. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, I th- that one of the interesting things about this generational phenomenon is just that. Now that we're all getting to the point where we're having children of our own, it's coming back into our lives. I mean, I, I don't think it's a coincidence or uh, inexplicable that in, say, 1985, 6, 7, 8, 9, Star Wars kind of went away. Mm-hmm. It's because all of those action figure fanciers and uh, uh, film addicts from the 70s had all become teenagers and suddenly they turned to other interests and a lot of us just left Star Wars behind and even those who didn't left it alone for a long time and now it's resurging and you can see it in things like the Hasbro uh, uh, vintage action figure series that started coming out a few years ago where they actually package, package the action figures to look like Kenner Star Wars action figures. Mm -hmm. They didn't do that for five-year-olds. The five-year-olds had no idea what the reference was, right? Mm -hmm. But all of us late 30-year-olds and 40-year-olds seeing that, seeing those action figures in Kenner blister packs hanging on the shelves, we immediately understood that. And it kind of made our our hearts leap, you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, So I think it's creeping back into our lives, whether we like it or not. Okay, now your book uh, a long time ago, growing up uh, and with and out of Star Wars, it basically it tells your story, sort of what you've been saying here. It tells the story of how you grew up with Star Wars; it was very important, and then you grew away from it. Uh, and then with the release of the special editions, it kind of and and of course, as you say, with the birth of your, your your son as well, you got back into Star Wars. It became important again. Why did you feel you had to write this book? Why why did you want to get this story out there? Because I noticed. I started noticing, uh, well, I've noticed my whole life, but especially in the last few years, uh, that when I meet people my age, especially men, but not only men, but especially men, meet people my age, um, if I have nothing in common with them at all, somehow Star Wars will come up and we have that in common. Mm -hmm. It's just this thing that happened to us all in the late 70s, early 80s, and that we all went through in one uh, degree or another. And as I started seeing this happening over and over again, I thought, well, you know, this is this is a story that I could tell that would be, uh, on the one hand, a memoir of my own uh, childhood, but would resonate because I meet people all the time, so long as they're in their late 30s, early 40s uh, men, chances are they had those same experiences. It doesn't matter what country they lived in, doesn't matter what their family was like or what their other uh, circumstances were growing up, certain you know, milestones, 1977, 1980, 1983, matter to them. Mm-hmm. So I thought there's a, there's a story to be told here that is personal to me to some extent, but is also pretty universal for a, a certain kind of, of childhood that we, so many of us went through in the 70s and 80s. Mm-hmm. We find on this show, we, we interview actors, writers, comic book artists, you name it, creative people, people that are into all the kind of things that we're into uh, on this show. And we all, I always say to them, you know, what influenced you? And without, I don't think one has ever not said Star Wars at some point. Um, I believe 
it's 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 weird.